Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. The nation's largest study of African Americans with cancer is taking place right here in Detroit in an effort to determine why blacks have higher incidence and higher death rates from the disease than other races. The National Cancer Institute is providing a $9 million grant for the project. The study is led by Carmanos Cancer Institute and Wayne State University School of Medicine. Joining me now are the two lead investigators, Dr. Ann Schwartz and Dr. Terry Albrecht. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you. Thank yeah, I think the, the, the first question I'll start with is, why Detroit? Why was Detroit chosen for the site of this study? We have been doing uh, studies of cancer risk and outcomes in metropolitan Detroit for many, many years. And we have the multidisciplinary team of investigators to do this kind of work. And Detroit provides an opportunity to have a large African-American population in which to study. There have been other smaller studies of cancer risk and outcomes in other parts of the country, but we have an opportunity here to look at a large population with very high, high rates of, of death. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talk about how high those rates are for African-Americans here. In the well, well, these rates outpace those of whites. Um, for prostate cancer, the incidence rates, for example, are nearly twice what they are for, for white men. Um, and mortality is, uh, is across the board, is much higher than it is uh, for whites in our area. Uh -huh. What's also quite striking is that the incidence and morta mortality rates for most of cancers with African Americans in the Detroit area outpace those for African Americans nationwide. So worse, worse in Detroit than, than other cities uh, just among African Americans. That's right. Okay, so then the question I guess is why? What's, what's the explanation for that? Well, that's what that's we what hope you're to find right? out. Right? <laughs> you know, there, are, there are many possible explanations in terms of issues of access to care, um, risk factors, treatment choices, um, genetics, biology. And so we're looking at a whole host of possible factors to try to come up with what is driving those rates and what we then can do to bring them down. Right. Uh, a lot of times when we talk about health on this show and African Americans, we talk about that sort of tension between uh, uh, cultural factors mm -hmm. uh, like diet, uh, things like that, uh, environmental issues, and care issues. Uh, in other words, that, that, that uh, mortality rates are, mm -hmm. are sometimes driven by both. Talk about that mix here in, uh, with cancer. Well, it's a variety of uh, biological, social, um, environmental, um, institutional factors uh, that affect um, quality of care, that, that affect uh, access to care, the utilization of care even. Um, we, what we, what we've found is that there are, there have been a, a disparate set of studies that have looked at each of those pieces, mm -hmm. um, and you know this, this genes to society. This has to do with basic biological differences to institutional racism to segregate housing segregation to deprivation to poor health in general, comorbidities, all of these things. So we know that each of these has an effect. What we really don't know is how these things interact together right. to place an undue burden on African Americans. You know, many people are surviving the treatment mm -hmm. of cancer mm -hmm. and maybe even living into one to five years, but they're not necessarily surviving as well as, as they should be and yeah. could be. Yeah, uh, comorbidity is, is something I'm quite interested in, this idea that uh, you die not just from cancer, but that there are other factors that, right. that help accelerate it. That, in that uh, respect, you can get to some of the other health problems that also face the black community more than others. Absolutely, we find that in some preliminary work we've done that risk of uh, hypertension is higher in the black population of cancer survivors. And so when you have to choose between taking care of yourself and doing your cancer treatments and what else is going on with your health, there's a lot to deal with. And so we've got to understand what those other comorbidities are, how they affect both your outcomes after treatment, how they might affect treatment choices, and what to do if you've survived your cancer, but now you have this other range of health effects 
that we need to be paying attention to. Yeah. So how do you move forward? Uh, do, you, do you find yourself at more risk of other health problems because you had cancer or as a result of the treatments from cancer? Is, it, is, it, is there a relationship there? There certainly can be. There's also, you know, some of the things that we've not disentangled very well are how the treatment for one disease affects uh, other, other diseases that you, you know, maybe have had while you are uh, then diagnosed with cancer. And, you know, the extent to which then those, uh, those that, that disease burden is, uh, you know, the synergy of that is much worse for you. Sure. There's also the case that our, our many, unfortunately, many of our cancer treatments, while they're very effective uh, related to cancer, can create other sorts of problems. Sure. Can affect uh, the heart, uh, can affect um, your uh, something called peripheral neuropathy, mm -hmm. which is uh, numbness and tingling that, yes. and, and with, that can also be painful. So the, the, the kinds of side effects that come about um, and that then weaken people's resistance and their resilience and their ability to withstand um, the, the, you know, the process of recovery yeah. is affected. Yeah. Uh, one thing that, that uh, strikes me is also important here is sort of uh, placing Detroit in the, the, the medical treatment context. Uh, not only do we have Carmanos here uh, in Southeast Michigan, we've got the University of Michigan Hospital, mm -hmm. which is also uh, quite renowned for cancer treatment, you would think maybe that would indicate or counterindicate some of the things that you're that you're talking about. Treatment should be better, or uh, survivability should be better here. Right. The Carmanus Cancer Institute is a NCI designated comprehensive cancer center, which means that we are at the forefront of research, treatment, education, and but people need to to be aware of that, and they need to look for the best care and go to the doctor right you know you right. you've once you're diagnosed great care but you've got to get into the system to be diagnosed yeah yeah and is it, the access issues i would imagine uh, are are formidable here in terms of access to insurance to be able to go to some place like Comanus. absolutely that all plays into it um, one of the things that, w that we're also quite concerned about is as a as a freestanding uh, NCI designated Comprehensive Cancer Institute. We rely on uh, ref the referrals from the primary care system throughout right. Detroit and there are uh, many residents in the city, many low-income African-American residents who don't have a primary care health home yeah. to help help them you know move to get you and navigate yeah. into the system. Yeah. And the other thing that we're very concerned about is that you know once treatment is finished that isn't the end of it. Right. I mean, there are many things that people need to do to recover from follow up, that yeah. treatment, follow up. And we're, we're very concerned that many people don't have a primary care health home to go back to. If they're not feeling well or if some, some long-term complications arise, they're back in the emergency department. Sure. And that, that doesn't um, that, that doesn't bode well for long-term quality of care. Yeah. Uh, quickly, the hope uh, out of this uh, research is to come up with uh, solutions. Uh, what, what's the timetable for, for that? This is a five-year study mm -hmm. to collect data on 5,600 5, African Americans with, with four types of cancer, breast, colorectal, lung, and prostate. Um, we should start getting information and, and analyses completed within the first year or two so we can start looking at the data um, to help design interventions. So yeah. um, it's a long-term goal, the grant's for five years, um, and it's going to take a little yeah. while. But yeah. uh, uh, Let's talk about how people might participate in uh, the study because it is open to... Right. The, the main study is, is one in which we identify individuals for participation, but because of the um, great interest in this study and the great response we've had from our community, we have opened the study to anyone interested in participating. They can call a toll-free number at 844-729-4854 if they're interested in participating. Yeah, yeah, and I would under I would imagine that you're already getting a lot of interest from, from yes, folks from some of the yeah. publicity that uh, the study has gotten. I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, congratulations on the work and thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Absolutely.